Well, good evening. Looks like there's only a few of us here in-house. I know that we have some people watching online. Uh, I'd like, like to welcome those few that are here to our service and celebration and remembrance. Um, we do have some food um, that has come in. So after the service is over, uh, we can all go down with our masks into the kitchen and we can get the food we have and we can make sure that uh, people that want some of that food uh, certainly can enjoy that and, uh, and bring that home. So thank you to the people that brought food. I know that um, in our fridge as well, we have a ton of cupcakes and cookies and other non-health food. So we will be able to get uh, the food we want to get. So, um, you know, it's interesting when I thought of this service a few months ago, things were very different. We weren't wearing masks. Um, I didn't really know uh, many people that were getting COVID. Hold on, I'm gonna, my chime is Bling it. I'm going to turn my, my sound off quick. And I know personally now a handful of people that have COVID. And it's uh, pretty crazy because I was hoping and praying that we'd be done with this. I was hoping and praying that things would fully get back to normal. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not where we're at. And I also know that through this pandemic, we've all lost a whole lot. Uh, what I did was I took these LED candles on the table here. On the bottom of them are little black switches. And what I wrote out here with these candles is hope. Now you'll notice I've already turned some of them on. Why did I do that? Because Jesus Christ is the light, the love, and the hope of the world. So a little later in the service, we'll have an opportunity to light a candle. We can speak if we want. Uh, we can give a testimony. I think for many of us, this time of pandemic has been one that has not been one we want to repeat. Many, many years from now, because I'm a young man, I'll be able to tell the young kids in church about the great pandemic that Pastor Paul lived through. And we hear about the one after uh, World War I, the Spanish flu or the influenza. Real easy to watch a program about it, real easy to see a picture of it, but when you're living through something like this, and when you can't go see a friend or someone you love because they're in the hospital and there's no visitors, it's a pretty tough time. Never in my life did I think I'd be walking around in a store with a mask on my face. I mean, doctors wore them, nurses wore them, but we have to wear them? So this is a whole new thing, and, and just because things are ramping up, now we don't have coffee hours or dinners anymore for a while. Not what I'd like. I'm a Methodist. We eat, right? That's what we do. So so what, uh, what I want to do, I know there's only a few of us here. I think I saw someone just come in. I created this greeting, um, a responsive greeting, and remember, this service is, is, is for us to be able to celebrate, to be able to mourn. We are going to start by praising God because we're here, amen? amen? We're in this church. We're not locked down. We're allowed to go out. We're, we're worshiping. We're free to fellowship. We're free to interact. Um, but as I said, unfortunately, we still have people that uh, have COVID. Anyone here by a show of hands know someone that has COVID? I do. I know a few people right now that have COVID. Um, so it's, it, it's just crazy. It's, it's frustrating. It's aggravating. Uh, you know, for me as a pastor, once I think we're past this, what, what's that Paul F. Duel song? Two step, one step forward, two steps back. And that's been kind of our reality. So thank you for being patient with us as we go through the great pandemic together. So our greeting in the bulletin, you're welcome to respond in the bold print. We all gather to worship God tonight after several months of this COVID-19 pandemic. We thank God that progress has been made and that we are moving forward. Some of the functions of our lives have resumed and we are hoping and praying that we will soon arrive at our new normal. This time has been hard, scary, isolating, and uncertain. Yet we are here and we are able to worship, celebrate, and remember. In this time of worship, Lord, may we take time to consider what we have given up, what we have lost, and how we have all suffered. Holy God, be with us as we praise and thank you for leading us this far, and be with us as we remember the people we have lost, and all we have lost in this pandemic. May we worship tonight with laughter, tears, love, and hope. I'd invite you to say this uh, unison prayer with me that I also created. Let us say this prayer as brothers and sisters in Christ together. Eternal God, sometimes our lives can get dark and dreary. During the many months of this pandemic, people have
have suffered so much. We know through, through that you have been with us through this suffering. We know that your son Jesus Christ suffered on the cross for us all. God, we worship you and we love you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit as we come to praise and worship you and remember the people we have lost and all we have lost in this pandemic. Even though we are where we're at, uh, Jesus Christ, after he appeared, after he resurrected from the dead, he came to his disciples and a few times he said, peace be with you. It's become a tradition in many churches to share a sign of love, to share a sign of peace. I am still shaking hands. Some people are elbow bumping, fist bumping, but this is the time of the service, friends, where we can greet each other as brothers and sisters in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us do that as, as we're comfortable.
also to express everything that I am going to express, and then you'll have an opportunity a little later to the Lord about this pandemic. Would you be in an attitude of prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we know that your nature is good. We know that your nature is loving. We know that your Son is with us through the end of the age, and we know that there is nothing that can separate us from his love through you. We also know that these many months have been very hard for many of us. It's been very hard for elderly people who are widows that haven't been able to get out and see people. It's been hard for people that have felt cut off. It's been hard for people that are in nursing homes and they don't know why their loved ones and friends and pastors weren't coming to see them. They were told that it was because of the pandemic, but maybe they didn't understand that. Maybe they felt abandoned. Maybe they felt unloved. I can't imagine through these months what it's been like to be a nurse or a doctor working 12, 16-hour shifts, doing everything they can to make sure people don't die from this terrible disease. It's been such a rough time. There's been fear. There's uncertainty. There were times of protests and cities and buildings on fire. It's been a crazy time. Many of us are weary of this, God. We seek to get through this time into the other end. We come tonight to pray. We come tonight to worship. We thank you for leading us this far. And God, we ask you to give us the courage to get through this so that we might come out the other side praising and thanking you. Let us join our hearts and our minds together to say the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, that Jesus taught us to pray nearly 2,000 years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. A couple of scriptures I picked out tonight, just ones that are encouraging, tough but encouraging. The first one is from the book of James, because we have to remember, friends, that as brothers and sisters in Christ, we are individuals, but we're also part of the church. Whatever church you go to, if they believe in Jesus, if they preach the word, we're brothers and sisters in Christ. So James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4, 214 in your beautiful Red Pew Bible, and this is what it says. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Second scripture I wanted to read before we read the gospel a little bit is one of my favorites. It's been a great comfort for me in really hard times in my ministry, in my life. And this is Paul's letter, the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses uh, 38 and 39 where we are given the promise of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We are here. We are worshiping. God is good. We have victory in Jesus. Let us stand as we're able, and we will sing one of my favorite hymns, one of Sarah's favorite hymns, 370, Victory in Jesus. Stand and sing with me as you're able.
stay standing as you're able for a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The reading of the Gospel is something that many stand for because it's the words of or about Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. The last thing Jesus said to his disciples and those who listened to end this Gospel. And Jesus came to them and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Once again, the word of God through the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I am guilty once in a while, friends, of taking my eyes off the full trust I should be putting in God. Some days, I think maybe things in the church aren't going as good as I want them to, or the church isn't growing as fast as I think it should, and I get discouraged. Sometimes I forget that my full trust and my full devotion needs to be in Jesus Christ. But I think we all have days where we slip and our eyes take, get taken off of Christ for a minute. What I put up, here, put up here for those who heard already is, with these candles, it says hope. Underneath them, there are little black switches, and you can turn them on, and we'll have this happen in just a couple of minutes. Similar to our Blue Christmas service, the more of these that are lit, the more of the light of Christ we're bringing into this space. And the more of the light of Christ that comes into this space, the more hope that we have. So what we're going to have, I'm going to give one first, and then there'll be a time where anybody can come light a candle, you can speak, you can give a testimony. If you want to talk about how things have been going for you during these many months of pandemic, or where the Lord has been present, you're welcome to do that. I know for me, this pandemic hit me like a ton of bricks. I remember it was last March, the first Sunday, Sarah, we had brought in two new people into membership. In fact, it might have been you, Barb, we brought into membership. The very next Sunday, we're putting signs on the doors, no service today because of COVID. And everything just changed. We weren't ready for this. I had an old camcorder. I recorded services. Eventually, we upgraded. We got that TV back there. It was a wild time. I couldn't go see anybody. We had to wear masks in the grocery store. We had these stupid arrows, so you went up this aisle and down that aisle. Nobody goes through the, the cart aisle at Price Chopper, at least I don't. But now I had to, because if you didn't go down that aisle, then you were backwards on the next row. So I told Melissa, the first time in my life, I actually went through every arrow in the grocery store, because if I didn't, I was going the wrong way. I had to go this way and come out that way. It was just a crazy time. It was a crazy time, and then last summer, there was a lull. And what we decided was, we're going to come back to worship, because the governor at the time let us do that. So once we were seated, we could take our masks off. We had the windows open. It was fine. We had no issues. It ramped up again, and we had another shutdown. It was a crazy time. And it was so hard for me to fully trust God, because I wanted to lead the church, and I still do. And I was worried that I was maybe making the wrong decision when I should have made the right decision. Every time we've gone back to wearing masks or shut down, believe me, it's something that has come to, through a lot of, lot of prayer and a lot of discernment. As the pastor of this church, I'm charged with making, making sure everyone here is taken care of and is safe. That's a hard task. Those are some heavy bricks on the shoulders sometimes. Well, I remember after about seven months of COVID, um, this past January, the first Sunday I had off. And I was so excited. It was New Year's. I remember Mary Pizzelli back there made us like a big gift bag. You know, we had enough food to feed an army, but it was just for Melissa and I. And we had this great vacation. And I came back on Tuesday, January 4th. It was so great to see Sarah. It was so great to see everybody else. And I worked late that night, as I do a lot. And I was about to walk into the parsonage. And literally, I stopped. As I went through the gate to walk on the porch, and the hair on my neck stood up. And Melissa, Melissa popped her head up, and she said, what's wrong? Or actually, I'm sorry, this was Wednesday the 5th this happened. She said, what's wrong? I said, something really bad is about to happen. She said, how do you know that? I said, it's just a feeling from God. 
She said, it's going to happen here or somewhere else. I said, both. Well, the next day, I found out that a couple people in our church had gotten COVID. And that was also the day that our capital got stormed. You remember that? And by the day after that, Sarah was taken by ambulance to the hospital. And all of a sudden, within about a week, we had about 15 or 20 people in this church or connected to this church that had COVID. I was on quarantine. I couldn't leave the parsonage for 10 days. That's why people were praying for Melissa so much. And I remember when I found out that people had COVID, Peggy Stilson, the, the woman who does so much here, lights our candles, she said, Sarah just got brought to the hospital in an ambulance. And I literally was downstairs in the living room of the parsonage, and I fell on my knees, and I wailed, and I had tears running down my face. And Melissa came down because she had been working remotely, because that's how it is anymore. And she said, what's wrong? And I said, they just took Sarah to the hospital. And we have other people, and I've been praying for them continually, and this is really just tearing my heart apart. And I remember all throughout those days when I was quarantined, I said, God, if it be your will, please take me and save my people. So convicted was I by it. I told our church leaders, I said, I know this wasn't my fault, but I'm willing to take full responsibility for this. If you need me to resign my position, I'll do it. And they looked at me and said, are you nuts? It wasn't the first time, and it probably won't be the last they've said that. It was such a hard time. And then we were able to come back, and things normalized, and now we have to wear the masks again. Now we can't have coffee hours and meals. It's been such a hard time. And it's been so hard for me through this time when we had people that were, were dying or sick. I couldn't go and see them. One of our beloved members who passed on to glory, Aggie Deshaw, I wasn't allowed to go see her. I just wanted to sit with her and hold her hand and let her know that God loved her. And I couldn't do that. And it really, really was hard for me. Her own family couldn't see her till within days. And her daughter was so excited that he, she could just touch the arm of her mother. I remember we went to see Dot Drake, Bill Dan and I last fall, and we were doing it through plate glass. And we had a phone, she had a phone, and she could not understand why we couldn't come in. And she got really distressed. She said, just come in. And we said, we want to, but we can't. I don't know about you, friends, but it's been hard when you know someone in the hospital or the nursing home, and you can't even go see them. You can't go see them because you're told you're not allowed because of COVID. This has been a painful time for many of us. It's also been an innovative time, too, because all of a sudden, Sydney, we're on the, inter we're on the internet, or as Steve Clark calls it, the interweb, and we're, we're able to reach you. This has been the positive. But what I want to do, I want to light a candle, a couple candles. <laughs> I want to light one for Aggie Deshaw, dear woman. She didn't die of COVID, but she died during this. And I also want to light one for a dear friend of mine, a brother in Christ, somebody who, the only one I ever knew that had a knife in his, in his belt, and he pulled it out and showed me one day really quick, and I didn't mess with him. This is for Gary Presley. I was so angry when Gary passed away, Sarah's husband, he was in the hospital. He had COVID. He, he beat it. He tested negative. He went to rehab, and within a handful of days, his heart beat out. But, you know, even so, I have hope in Jesus Christ. Even though there are moments where I lose vision of that, and I have hope because of what God's doing in this church, what God's doing in this world. And for those who are here this morning, we heard a great story from a, Rome, a, a missionary that goes to Romania who told us what it's like to have babies in cribs that were put there the day they were born, and some of them never have been bathed or held for months or years. And when she went in and started washing and holding these babies, they were so distraught by human touch they didn't know what to do. But we have hope in Jesus Christ. So friends, I'm going to invite you, and you, you can speak, you can come forward. These candles represent the light of Jesus Christ. And as you're moved by the Spirit, I'd invite you to come up. If you want to light ten of them, if you want to light five of them, and feel free if you want to speak what God has put on your heart. So let me invite you to do that now.
been a rough time. It's really been a rough time, and, and uh, it's been rough when there's somebody we love in a nursing home or, or just in their house, and for some reason we can't go see them. I mean, nobody prepared for this, and but we are calling on the hope and the love and the light of Christ in the midst of this. So, so I'm so glad you're all here. Um, I can't wait until we can say that this is pretty much done. We are going to have the craziest, most ruckus ser service you've ever seen. We're going to do when the saints go marching in. Mike's going to dance. I don't know if that's true, but we'll find out. And we'll actually be able to have food for real, you know. So, so I'm looking forward to that day. But um, if there's no more candles, why don't we stand as we're able? 378, Amazing Grace. After I say the prayer, I have a, a this is olive wood from Israel. There's oil in here. If anybody wants to be prayed over or anointed with oil, I'd be more than uh, honored to do that. So let's sing Amazing Grace. I'll give a blessing and a, and a prayer, and then we can do this. And also, we do have some food that's come in. Even though we can't do meals because of increased COVID, we can go down and grab a few things. So thank you for bringing food if you did. <laughs>
we are the church. And we're not going anywhere. We will be here. We will be loving people. I will continue probably to drive Tom crazy because I'm good at that. And we will continue to do what we do because we love Jesus Christ. And we're called to serve him and change the world. Friends, know that you're loved. Know that you're prayed for. Know that you're always welcome here. And know that we are the church. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you that you have led us this far through this great time of the great pandemic. And I just pray that you can continue to be with us, continue to keep us safe, and continue to move us forward so that we can get to a better place where we can say that we are through this, or at least the worst of it, and we are to our new normal. Bless us now. Send us forth with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if anybody wants healing, anointing, prayer, you don't have to do that. Just since it's the nature of the service, I wanted to offer that. So God bless you all. I know we have a little bit of food. Maria brought in a big veggie tray only to find out that we're not having food a couple days ago. So I apologize for that. Um, but certainly you want some people to have some of that, right? So if anybody wants to go down into our kitchen to the fellowship hall. Like to take as much as they want. Okay. Yeah, and thank you for doing that. And God so. bless you all. Welcome to COVID, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let me...